Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Carol Baker was popular as both a serious dramatic actress and a blonde bombshell during the 1950s and 60s. Her wavy blonde hair, curvaceous figure and sex appeal often drew comparison with another sex symbol of her era, Marilyn Monroe. What was between Carol Baker and James Dean? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. As talented as she was beautiful, Baker was a versatile actress who could play the role of a naive ingenue and a manipulative sex kitten with the same aplomb. She took lessons at the actor's studio and studied under Lee Strasberg before making her film debut with a small part in a musical. She soon ventured into Broadway as well, and before long was a popular actress both on stage and in films. While her sultry looks led her to be termed a sex symbol, her poignant acting skills earned her respect as a serious dramatic actress. Carol Baker is an actress who has yet to receive her due, one of the last stars to come out of the world of method acting that birthed legends like James Dean and Marlon Brando. Baker set the world on fire with her performance as Baby Doll Mian in Elia Kazan's 1956 feature Baby Doll. From there she went on to star in iconic projects like Something Wild and How the West Was Won. Carol Baker's work in Elia Kazan's Baby Doll and Jack Garfine's Something Wild is just as impressive and valuable as any performance delivered by her legendary actor's studio contemporaries. So why isn't she talked about in the same way? After the simultaneous sensation and scandal of Baby Doll, Baker became a star, but she spent most of her career either avoiding sex symbol roles or begrudgingly accepting them. Despite a handful of other great performances, conflicts with studios, producers and her husband, Garfine, marred her career. One can't help wonder what it would have looked like if she had her druthers. Sexual tensions pervade all of Elia Kazan's complex films, and in Baby Doll they take an ironic, almost comic turn, which didn't prevent an enormous scandal on its release, when the Catholic National Legion of Decency pronounced it salacious, and Cardinal Spellman took the trouble to declare it evil in concept and order abstinence from viewing under pain of sin. There was a considerable hue and cry when the film was released. The Legion of Decency urged Catholics to boycott it, and Baby Doll became Baker's middle name. She tried, unsuccessfully, to fight all the nympho roles thrown at her. I came in at the end of the big studio system, Baker recalled. I still had a slave contract, and they were willing to put you in almost anything they had. Carol Baker is excellent in the title role of a virgin bride married to ageing cotton mill owner Carl Malden, who is locked in hopeless competition with a virile rival Eli Wallach for Baby Doll's virginity. Georges Sadoul calls Baby Doll one of Kazan's and Tennessee Williams' best films, and comments that underneath it is a drama of ownership, close to Balzac and Zola, and presents a realistic portrait of the South. The natural sets, the decor and the objects surrounding the characters play a major role. Exceptional performances by Carol Baker and stage actor Eli Wallach. Even today, the image of Carol Baker sucking her thumb on the post of a baby doll seems a little wrong. In 1956, a billboard was constructed in Times Square advertising the film, where Carol Baker was depicted in the image of a scantily clad lying in a crib sucking her thumb. This advertising caused a preemptive criticism from religious groups. It was formally condemned by the Roman Catholic Church, who considered it offensive to Christian standards of morality and decency. Despite this, Baby Doll received $51,232 in its first week at Victoria Theatre, and Baker won immense praise for her performance, establishing her as an A-list actress. The controversy hurt the film's box office, but brought Baker, who appeared in Giant in the same year, into the limelight. She won the Golden Globe as New Star of the Year in 1957, and for a decade was a sex symbol who shared top billing with some of the biggest male stars. Carol Baker was born on May 28, 1931 in Johnston, Pennsylvania, to Edith Gertrude and William Watson Baker, who was a travelling salesman. 
Her parents broke up when Carol was eight, and she went to live with her mother and younger sister. Her childhood was a difficult one spent in poverty, as her mother struggled as a single parent. She attended Greensburg Central Catholic High School, where she was a debate team member and an active in marching band and school musicals as a teenager. She also worked a stint as a magician's assistant on the vaudeville circuit, before deciding to become an actress. In 1949 she won the title Miss Florida Fruits and Vegetables. She then moved to New York, where she rented an apartment in Queens, making ends meet as a nightclub dancer and chorus girl. This time she was introduced to Louis Ritter by the headliner of the show, who asked if Baker could stay at the Waylin Hotel, which Ritter owned, for free. Ritter gave her jewels and furs and eventually married her. He was 54, she was only 21, and had been married five times before. In her biography she reveals that Ritter took her virginity. After about a year they divorced. After her divorce she became friends with James Dean, who recommended her for the lead role in Rebel Without a Cause. She turned down the part, which went instead to Natalie Wood, a decision she came to regret. Carol Baker will never forget sharing meals with James Dean on the set of 1956's Giant. He fascinated me, and I used to stare at him to see if I could read his thoughts. When he caught me staring, he would break into a crooked grin. Their chemistry never blossomed into romance, however. It became my well-considered opinion that Jimmy was, in fact, asexual, Carol said. Girls I knew who had been close to Jimmy only spoke about how he held their hands, and how innocent and boyish he had been, never touching them. That didn't stop the Hollywood gossip columnists from spreading rumours of a tryst between James and Carol, who was married to legendary actor-studio teacher Jack Garfine during the filming of Giant. Hedda Hopper wanted me to say I was having a love affair with Jimmy, Carol complained. It was so distasteful and unfair. Why should I be put in the position of having to deny such a blatant falsehood? You couldn't blame people for wondering, given some of the exciting experiences Carol had with James. During her first trip to Hollywood in 1955, he whisked her onto his big silver motorcycle for a joy ride she'll never forget. In 1952, Carol Baker enrolled at the Actor's Studio, where she studied under Lee Strasberg. In the same year, she appeared in television commercials for Winston Cigarettes and Coca-Cola. She was also featured in an episode of Monodrama Theatre, which was broadcast on Dumont Network. Baker's career had begun to heat up, with roles in commercials and a small walk-on part in Easy to Love in 1953. The role landed her in two Broadway productions, Roger McDougall's Escapade and Robert Anderson's All Summer Long. These appearances brought her to the attention of director Eli Kazan, who cast Baker as the title character in his controversial Baby Doll. Baby Doll would remain the film for which she is best remembered. She was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress for her role. Later, she was also titled Woman of the Year by The Look magazine in 1957 from Harvard University's Hasty Pudding Club, and appeared on the cover of Life magazine in June 1956. But from the success of Baby Doll, Carol Baker received a steady flow of films, which required her to play the sex symbol, but turned down almost all the movies. She began to have troubles with her studio, Warner Brothers, when she refused several roles, including the role of a nymphomaniac in 1958's Too Much Too Soon. In 1957 she began filming The Big Country, opposite Gregory Peck and Charlton Heston. She was also in the 1962 western How the West Was Won, part of an all-star cast that included Carl Malden, Gregory Peck, John Wayne, Jimmy Stewart, Richard Widmark and Debbie Reynolds. In 1965, Baker starred in Harlow as the screen siren Gene Harlow. The film was a flop, and Baker had trouble getting work in Hollywood afterward. She would go on to work steadily in films throughout the late 50s and early 60s, appearing in a variety of genres romances, westerns and steamy melodramas, including Something Wild, directed by her husband Jack Garfine, and Station 6 Sahara. She played a cynical, alcoholic movie star in the 1964 hit The Carpet Baggers, which once again brought her sex image to the fore. Following this film, she was typecast as a blonde bombshell in many other movies. 
While Baker was on location in Africa for the 1965 movie Mr. Moses, an apocryphal story has it that a Maasai chief offered 150 cows, 200 goats, sheep and $750 for her hand in marriage. She subsequently appeared with Maasai warriors on the cover of Life's 1964 issue. Maasai are prominently a nomadic community in Kenya with a rich culture. Their culture is a major tourist attraction in the country. In December 1964, she appeared as a sex symbol in Playboy, issue followed by Silla of 1965, where she was an ex-prostitute and con artist. But Baker was never exactly a wallflower. Three decades ago, when she rolled into Hollywood like a blonde express train, she made headlines. Her first major movies, Giant and Baby Doll, were released within months of each other, to popular and critical acclaim. At 25, she was acknowledged as the rarest of Hollywood birds, a bombshell who could act. There seemed to be no limit to her potential. Then, ten years later, she was emotionally paralysed by despair, in debt, essentially blackballed by the studios, and self-exiled to Europe. What happened? I was a vegetable for three years, said Baker. The 1960s marked a difficult period in her personal life, Baker's Hollywood run came to a sudden end in the late 60s, and she took her talent to Europe for a time. Having separated from her husband, she was a single parent to her two children. By 1966, she had been fired from Paramount, and she had had two nervous breakdowns. After a nervous breakdown, she bought back her Warner contract, but her life and career continued to unravel. The lowest ebb was when I was most famous. I had lost myself. My marriage was shattered, I was a few hundred thousand dollars in debt, I was a work machine, I didn't know what I was, but I wasn't a human being anymore. After a second nervous breakdown in 1966, she began a long, slow climb out of the maelstrom. Skin flicks were her salvation. Italian director Marco Ferrari offered her work in Rome. The films were built around me, she said. The intrigue varied, but there was one constant, nudity. She defends what she did. My marriage was over, I was blackballed in Hollywood, I had debts. How was I to earn a living to support my children? During this time she moved to Italy, where she appeared in films such as The Sweet Body of Deborah, The Devil Has Seven Faces, and Baba Yaga. She escaped to Italy, where director Marco Ferrari hired her for her harem, she became a favourite of the Italian horror films of Umberto Lenzi, who cast her in Orgasmo and So Sweet, So Perverse, both in 1969. Many of Baker's roles during her European period shared a common element, nudity, but she had been blackballed in Hollywood and needed to support her children, so she took the roles. She returned to the Western genre, sort of, with Captain Apache, an acid Western shot in Spain and directed by an Italian, Gianfranco Paralini. That was definitely not politically correct. Since returning from Italy, she has had roles in a few films, including Kindergarten Cop, and has been a character actor for several television shows. By 1977, she was cast in Andy Warhol's Bad. She played a lead role in A Queen's Beauty Salon Owner, this was followed by The Sky is Falling in 1979 and in 1980 Walt Disney horror film The Watcher in the Woods. By and large, she produced Red Monarch in 1983, The Secret Diary of Sigmund Freud, and Portrait in Evil, another of her production was Native Son and Iron Weed in 1987. By 1982 she had married her third husband, British actor Donald Burton. They remained married until he died in 2007. She returned to the US and resumed her acting career in the 80s, and today is an underappreciated icon. She retired in 2003 with 50 years of acting career and more than 80 roles in film, television and theatre. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Carol Baker? Her poignant acting skills earned her respect as a serious dramatic actress.